Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Murder Journal. I'm Mel. I'm Tommy. And we are back at it. We are, because we're going to talk about experts. Experts. <laughs> so far, experts. Uh, from what we've watched, now Mel has told me I cannot watch videos going forward and then coming back because it's driving me crazy, guys. It is nuts just watching how the prosecution's <laughs> witnesses and experts are like. Everything but. Yeah. Uh, well, they've had a couple of good ones. Um, Especially being a bunch of SMEs. Yeah. Subject matter experts. That's what we call them in the military, in the army. They're SMEs. Like, honestly. But I are they? Know. Are no. they? So the prosecution was objecting to the defense's expert witnesses because of a Rule 14 violation, meaning, you know, uh, they got the information to them late after discovery, blah, 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 blah. The Judge Canoni here, though, is in a difficult position because disallowing expert witnesses for the defense, Tommy, you run this fine line of violating a defendant's constitutional right to you know an avid defense yeah but again there are federal rules of procedure there are rules of procedure civil procedure in in every state and at a certain point you have to disclose your witnesses you have to turn over all discovery but according to the prosecute or the defense Hey, listen, they didn't seek out any of these uh, proposed experts. They came to them after the trial had already started. And it's not like the prosecution hasn't pulled fast ones either. You know, now, aren't these uh, these expert witnesses coming from the defense? Aren't they from the FBI side? Yes. Well, two of them. Two of them were um, the the biomechanical and the, the, the technical engineers. They were hired and contracted by the Department of Justice and the FBI to ascertain whether or not John O'Keefe's death could be attributed to a motor vehicle accident in the manner of which Massachusetts State's police is saying that it it, it did occur. Um, and, there is a federal investigation. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and, well, with the dog bite, that didn't come through the DOJ or the FBI. Adam Alan Jackson was a prosecutor, a district attorney in LA, and he had a friend, uh, obviously. And um, another district attorney, this witness, expert witness, she has a very, very unique niche. In fact, she's probably one of maybe a couple fingers that were not, if only, I think she's probably the only one who was a Massachusetts police officer, was a do ER doctor, was a forensic pathologist, and actually was published about dog bites. But she wasn't, so she contacted his Jackson's DA friend who then contacted Alan Jackson saying, hey, I have an expert here who may be able to help your case because this is her specialty. Okay. So that's how she got involved. So we're going to go through the voir dire of the three expert witnesses that uh, the prosecution is is questioning whether or not they should their testimony should even be allowed. That, and it's very fast because it's not in front of a jury. It's, hey, what are your credentials kind of thing? You know, so, so the jury we... wasn't even in there. No, these... for voir dires, there are there is no jury present. At all. That's what a voir dire is. It's it's like a pre-examination. And oh, if these guys actually have the ability to go and then the judge rules to see the if judge will rule. Yes. Okay. So the voir dire is in the absence of any jurors. Okay. Okay. So we ready, Freddie? We're ready. Because I've I'm chomping at the bit. 
I'm chomping at the bit here to get um because these are real experts, like in real life. <laughs> so I know I'm yawning. I'm tired. I was at the hospital. We had a, a friend have a stroke last night. Oh, I'm during, so sorry. Uh, mom's dart tournament. So uh, yeah. mom came by, picked me up, and we went all the way down to Nashville to go visit him. So, well, he or her, or they, then, then, what? Is it a he, she, they, them, what? It's definitely it not a he, she. It's just it a he. He. Well, <laughs> I hope he has a full recovery. And not a she. You know, you know what? We don't need to be friends anymore. <laughs> you guys heard it. It's evidential proof. She does no Shut longer up. want to be friends. This We're guy. family. This guy. <laughs> Here we go. Do you ever skip the court the case now and hear the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll keep on. I do. I need some volume. Oh, morning. I, she hasn't. She's not in front of the the mic yet. The, she was just getting sworn in. Well, that sucks. I want to hear it loud and proud. This is what I imagine I'm going to look your like. Your voice up. Speak years. right into that microphone, Doctor. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning. Uh, could you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? Yes, Marie Russell. R U S S E L L. Sounds Doesn't like she look delightful? Henry <laughs> Russell. <laughs> so please keep your voices elevated as possible and speak. Maneuver the microphone however you need to. Okay. Okay. Uh, Suck started. Russell, what do you do for a living? Uh, I am a uh, retired emergency physician and forensic pathologist. And tell me uh, what education you have. Going all the way back to the beginning, that qualifies you as an emergency physician. See her eyes just roll like, do I have to go back to the beginning? Okay, well, in the, well, uh, on the sixth day, I've God about, said, uh, at least sixteen years of formal education beyond high school. Uh, initially, I uh, started at MIT, uh, where I uh, did my pre-med courses. I had always wanted to be a physician. And so, uh, so I went to MIT for a year, took my pre took pre med courses, and then I had an unusual life event in that my mother came down with cancer, and and she uh, subsequently I'll just passed go away. against your credentials. Uh, during the time away, I, so I took some time off from school. That's why. Um, during that period of time, I decided to explore another interest of mine, which was law enforcement. I was going to say and something so dirty I there. Courses in <laughs> law enforcement, and I became a full-time police officer here in Massachusetts. What years were you at MIT? Uh, that was uh, 1972 to 1974. Did you go to the police academy? I did. When uh, Once I be uh, became a police officer here in Massachusetts, I attended the uh, Boston Police Academy where I graduated. What year was that? That was in 1977. During the course of your training as a police officer, did you have any specialized training in hit and run and accidents and investigations? Yes, I did. Uh, and which agency did you work for as a sworn peace officer? I worked for uh, the city of Malden uh, full time for seven years. That would be from 1977 to 1984 approximately? Correct. During that time, did you continue your education in any way? I did. So I okay. Uh, I took as many courses as I could from the uh, Massachusetts Criminal Justice Training Council, uh, which included a, a course, a several day course in hit and run accident investigation. I took courses in uh, forensic uh, photography and uh, numerous other things. And then and, and I also at the same time uh, continued to, to go to college and I did that part time. Uh, where I eventually got a degree in a bachelor's degree of science in psychology with highest honors. What institution was that from? That was from Northeastern University. And that was Jeez, oh, Pete, she's smart. I think it was a bachelor of science. Got it. Uh, subsequent to your bachelor of science degree from Northeastern, did you also advance your education further formally? Uh, subsequent to, so, so yes, yeah, so I um, decided that I did want to pursue a medical career. 
And so I uh, then attended uh, medical school, University of Massachusetts Medical School full time uh, for four years. Uh, did you ultimately get a degree, uh, an MD degree from UMass? Yes, a doctor of medicine degree in 1987. So you were there from 1983 to 1987, is that right? That is correct. And did you do a residency? I did. I did two residencies, actually. Wow. Uh, most people do one, but I, I did two. Uh, I did um, uh, my first residency was uh, a combined internship and residency for four years. And I did that in Los Angeles at Los Angeles County uh, Medical Center, which is a, a very big trauma center and um, what I would consider the Bellevue of the West Coast. So what she's talking about is USC medical center county usc it's huge you see yeah, there's like it. thousands of people go through their day so i i mean it's... i've seen the university mm -hmm. like uh when especially i think it was my first time visiting and uh california and i got to see the university and how big the campus is and all that stuff so but yeah and... it's it's a huge medical facility yeah. yeah so county usc the other thing is is like it's so busy you see so many different types of patients you know beyond the standard because it's it's also a trauma center i we have one here at vanderbilt yep so mm -hmm. and so it's like equivalent Just yeah the volume only bigger usc medical center that is correct is it one of the busiest medical uh, trauma centers in the country yes you were there from 1987 to 1991, is that right? Uh, for yes, I was. Yes, I did my uh, ER internship and residency during those years. Yes, there. During that time, were you seeing? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> yes, there. <laughs> I was. I was a trainee, so I was. Uh, I was seeing as many patients as we could. There was always a you know a waiting room full of patients, and yes, yeah, so I saw many many patients during that time period. Did, you indicated a second residency. Tell me about that. Okay, so um, oh, she's excited I still about this part. Realized I had an interest in forensics, and I so I decided that I wanted to also. What's train this guy on the computer looking at? So I did um, a second residency in um, anatomic pathology, two years, uh, followed by forensic pathology fellowship. At the Los Angeles I think he's County on Facebook. Coroner's Office. For two I years. think he's looking at Caitlin Clark. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> basketball. 1991 to Wait a minute. Are those jurors? That is correct. Um, they wouldn't have laptops if there was with jurors. Fellow right? Los Angeles Coroner's Office. Los Angeles County Coroner's Jurors office. don't have laptops. Right. Right? Or unless I, don't they all look like they're taking all the same notes? Yeah. I mean, they do. They look like they're, well, except for this guy's on YouTube or something. But no, I don't think all the jurors are, are there. Okay, so they can't be, those can't be jurors because they already got in trouble for scanning the jury. Right? Okay. Yeah, those can't be jurors. So I decided that I wanted to also train in forensic pathology. So I did um, a second residency in um, anatomic pathology two years, uh, followed by forensic pathology fellowship at the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office for two years. Maybe and reporters? Years, uh, if that's four years, that would be from 1991 to 1995, approximately? That is correct. Um, tell me what your experience was as a fellow at the Los Angeles Coroner's Office, Los Angeles County Coroner's Office. Yes, well, uh, it also was a very busy coroner's office. And so uh, every day there would be uh, cases. I probably did at least uh, two cases a day, uh, most days. And, Dead um, bodies everywhere. <laughs> and um, educational opportunities. But uh, the interesting thing about being a fellow is they try to give you a wide assortment of cases. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I not only saw numerous uh, victims so of gunshot violence and stabbings, but I saw numerous victims of motor vehicle accidents and, um, and you know, natural death, overdoses. And then if th there was an unusual case, it usually went to the fellow, you know, because the fellow was also being supervised. So did any of those unusual cases, and we'll get more into this in just a second, but did any of those unusual cases include animal attacks? Yes. Uh, did you become a 
a professor, an educator at any point? Yes. So um, during my 29 years at L.A. County Hospital, oh, uh, wow. I, during the the last 25 of those, I was 29 years assistant professor uh, or look. 29 years at County USC. I don't think there's an injury, a wound, an illness this woman <laughs> has seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here 29 years. I yeah, mean, doctor, but mostly in assistant professor. And that what that meant is that I was uh, responsible for overseeing the care that was provided by the interns and residents. So when a patient would come in to the into the hospital, the emergency room. Uh, they were oftentimes usually seen by the intern or resident, and then I would go and subsequently see that patient also. So, so she's house. Uh, and that was in addition yeah. to my own cases. So I'd see my cases and their cases. And that was at LAUSC, correct? That is correct. And and um, Can I ask again, a quick question? Yes. LAUSC, for those of us who are not uh, necessarily familiar with it, is that associated with the University of Southern California Medical Center? Yes. That's the school, in other words. The yes. So it stands for Los Angeles County slash University of Southern California Medical Center. And that's where you were an assistant professor for the, the majority of the rest of your career. Correct. Were you also an assistant uh, or an adjunct professor at uh, Cal State Los Angeles? Yes. Okay. How long were you a, an, an adjunct professor there? I believe that was four or five years. Smacking and I taught criminalistics, um, forensic medicine there. Forensic medicine. In the ER, in other words, a supervising physician in the ER, can you tell us what some of your duties and responsibilities included, especially as it pertains to trauma? And then I'll get more specific in just a second. Okay. Well, so I would oversee the care of all the patients that came in during a particular shift. And that would include medical patients and trauma patients. And as I mentioned, uh, it's a, it was a very busy trauma center. We, so we had lots of trauma patients, including the types of violence I described earlier um, that I saw at the coroner's office, um, but lots of uh, um, motor vehicle accident victims because there was a highway there right nearby. There were a couple of highways. And, and um, so, yeah, so a wide variety of accidents. Did your supervision include assessing, diagnosing, and treating patients? Correct. In terms of the middle part of that diagnosis, uh, was part of your job to determine the cause of injuries or to at least assess the cause of injuries? Yes, and I took that on a little bit more because I was interested in the forensics aspect of the injuries. The forensic aspect? Yes. Okay. Um, So she liked to During deal your with time at LAUSC, even after you and, and focus on after after the death or after the in the injury itself, right? Yes. Okay. So she got curious about the injuries, started using forensic to, to get to more in get, depth. to get more information on exactly what things look like, how they look like, and what they're, you, how they were, mm -hmm. uh, they came upon the person. I, I know that's not the right verbiage, but, but it you know makes sense. Saying, like, yeah, we're trying to to make sure. I think that's actually perfect. I'm trying to dumb it down. Dumb it down. Yeah. Not that you guys, you, my, our viewers yeah, are dumb. I'm just not, I am. But, but there are people who don't understand. Mm -hmm. bigger words or the way things sound and yeah. so by slowing it down or saying hey this way it just helps people understand because they speak have you ever noticed like this the supreme nerds like like dr russell here um their vernacular is so technical and so filled with their jargon for their expertise yes. it's hard to understand sometimes well it's so. kind of like us in the army once you know oh, yeah. once we start speaking about our job to civilians as we call them mm -hmm. <laughs> like they'd be like what's well, an eta yeah yeah what's uh on my six like uh yeah. why do we need what's to know an LTV? like yeah. yeah so it's 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 so in other words Dr. Russell, let's, let's she was an officer for Massachusetts. She was a Massachusetts police officer. She was 
an ER doctor at County USC. She was a forensic pathologist and fellow at you at the LA County Coroner's office. Yes. And she was a professor at both USC Medical School Why? and at Cal State LA. Why she was training the interns, you know, the people who come mm-hmm. in there and it, the hospitals may select you to stay on board or you get shipped yeah. off somewhere else. Like, but so she's monitoring her crew of interns. She's that a are, chief. Yeah. Yeah. And then along with that, she had her own per- work files that she yeah. had to do. So uh, she's ridiculously, and keep in mind, she, she also, she started her education at MIT <laughs> pre-med. <laughs> The lady is smart, in other words. She's a, she's a, she's one smart cookie. She's a winner's office as a fellow. Did you continue to stay in contact with the coroner's office and have relationship with the coroner's office as a supervising physician? I continued to stay in contact with the coroner's office and I used to attend their conferences as often as I could, not as a supervising physician, but as a, as a physician and a, a graduate of their program. During your tenure at LAUSC, did you ever become the director of any programs at LAUSC? Yes. Does that include the director? And they are. And they- <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> She's like I'm the sorry. first one who yes. just answered the question. <laughs> like, yes. Like, we both she's like- been going on about, <laughs> hey, her programs and stuff and every her education. But that one's like, uh yes. <laughs> like crickets were sounding like come on. Early 2000s late 90s? Yes, that sounds about right. Okay. And we would we would conduct lots of courses including trauma um um life support courses. Did LAUSC incorporate a uh, a quality improvement program? Yes. Within their their uh, institution. Of course yes. they did. Did you become a director mm-hmm. of that as well? Yes. So Good you Lord. Director of Center for Life Support Training and director of LAUSC Medical Center Quality Improvement. Is that right? Oh, he's going Quality to the list on Quality Improvement was it. for the emergency department. Oh, well, yes. she was an uh, ER doctor. Did you also become yes. a director for... She was chief the of the she ER. Said that, she said that yes. she was what in the it? ER with the interns. LAUSC and the very, very expansive jail system in Los Angeles County. So LA County Hospital was unique in that they um, many, many years ago developed a jail, what they called a jail ward, which was a combined inpatient, outpatient, and ER. So there was a dedicated jail ER. And that had been in existence for probably about 70 years now. Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, patients that were uh, placed under arrest by either LA sheriffs, LAPD, uh, uh, California Highway Patrol, or any of the municipal agencies in, in the area, and I think there were about 70 or, or more municipal agencies, could bring their patient to the LA County Jail Ward where they, uh, the patients would get treatment. Ultimately, you became the director of that entire program, correct? Yes. Wow. Uh, did you also work with the- She makes the rest the of us look California. bad. Because we yes. just Alcatraz eat your heart out. <laughs> About seven years, I worked part time uh, for quit. the uh, California Medical Board as a um, physician assigned to one of their enforcement teams, <laughs> and I did that uh, one day a week, and I did my other job at the county hospital the other forty hours a week. This woman is amazing. I feel like such an underachiever for the first time in my life. I've always been told I'm an overachiever, but no, 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 no. That's Dr. Russell. Don't I feel like a slacker? Hey, Russell. (laughs) It's a love shack, baby. Okay. Okay. That is correct. Do you hold the title of chief medical executive for the the, uh, California state prison system, uh, specifically at Corcoran? Yes. Uh, tell us about that. So I retired from L.A. County Hospital, and I went on to um, move on to the L.A., uh, excuse me, the California 
Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. And what, uh, what year was that? Did you that, make that transition? So uh, 2018 is when I started for the state prison system. Okay. And I worked there for five years as director of their medical service. Now uh, I know why Corcoran. she's retired. I'm sorry. So for that prison, she's tired. Within that system, she's done uh, it all. You were the chief medical executive for the entire agency, correct? Instant that is correct. Right. Good. For the Lord. entire for the entire prison. Understood. Um, Could you imagine, like pause it real quick? I see her getting picked up in the future to look at different cases and just like another to, like yeah. Joe Kinder. Like holy she crap! Needs a show. Her, her credentials is nasty. Like it is unbelievable mm -hmm. <laughs> unbelievable like you were a cop you became a doctor for 29 years you did this that this corner this that yeah. this forensic pathology you were published this, this you were an, you were a teacher she went on to get a bachelor's degree in psychology from northeastern while she was a full-time police officer that's what i'm saying like Stop it. Stop it, Dr. Russell. This this woman I would hate I, you know what? If she was my mom, I would I a would a hero. Yeah. Like like right there. Right there. You did it. You did it. Yeah. But did it also brings to me, are you book smart or are you street smart? And I think she's savvy on both because you've got to be fucking street smart. Well, she was a cop ER. for seven years. You get what I'm saying? A cop for seven years and then went into the ER. Come on. It's kind of like on. the the OE pay. In the military, so like uh, you enlist for at least three years, three to four years, and then turn around and become an officer. I like them. I like people mm -hmm. who did the enlistment time to turn like around and green to gold an or something. Yes. Yeah. And I have more respect for them than a, the a because normal they know lieutenant. what it's like to be a grunt. You know. Yeah. And that's it. That's where it, it's not that I disrespect leadership. No, that's not mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I'm saying that they understand how the enlisted side works. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're not like, yeah, and that's where we're jumping she's... through hoops and stuff. Like, hey, yeah. So, yeah. In emergency medicine. Yes. Are you a member of the Little National shark guys. Medical Exam? Sorry, guys. Yes. Are you a member of the American Academy of Forensic just... Science? Yes. You have any publications in the area and i'm going to be very specific because i you you've you've been relatively widely published is that right um some people don't be humble yes, already no <laughs> don't be humble uh, bro more than a couple of publications correct and peer-reviewed journals correct yes i want to focus your attention on animal injuries have you been published in the area of oh. animal injuries specifically yes do you remember <laughs> all those publications uh, yes, they had to do with uh, law enforcement dog bites. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Dog bites in the ER. Yes, I was a co-author. 1996. Why are we staring okay. at these two? And, uh, like, stare at somebody I else. I know. Yes. Can we go back to Dr. Russell? Yes. And ultimately available to be cited by other doctors and studied by other doctors, correct? Correct. Did you all she is the source. When I tell people cite your sources, she's the source. She, okay. She Hashtag is winning. She is published. Oops, that was a hell of a whistle. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> that word swell. That's from Lady to Tramp, you guys. If you've never seen it, oh, I thought it's a it cartoon was on Disney. The old guy on the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mean <laughs> Herbert the Pervert from Family Guy. <laughs> Whatever. Seriously, study. Article, I got some popsicles uh, downstairs in the cellar. Injuries, complications. Let's go on down there and go get it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Is that in 1997? Sounds right. Was that also peer reviewed? Yes. And that also that publication was also available for other physicians throughout California and throughout the country to refer to for the study of animal bites and dog bites. Correct. Dog bites. Yes. Dog bites. Uh, concerning animal injuries. During the course of your professional experience, how many patients have you seen? Or I think his bracelet has a set animals, of cuffs including dog locked dog together. If you had to estimate. Many hundreds. Uh, would you say it's, a, it's a set of cuffs locked together? <laughs> okay, it's over. Because I'm locked up. Um, I can't. I, I don't know because we did over 500 records back in the earlier days. We didn't keep records. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dog bites and scratches. Yes, in my uh, 29 years at LA County Hospital, yes, and 
my dog bites, I mean, dog bites I took care of and dog bites that the residents took care of. Yes. And you've even published articles and studied, not just seen them, but studied dog bites and dog wounds, correct? Yes. Have you qualified as an expert previously in other courts as an emer in, in emergency medicine? Yes. Have you qualified as an expert in other courts in forensic pathology and wounds? Yes. Has that been in both state and federal court? Yes. Oh, she's an expert, bro. Good Dr. luck, Lolly. Were you asked to review certain materials related to this case? Yes. And that was in furtherance of coming to... Hey, pause it real quick. To an opinion. What is that? Is that a black strap behind him? Going this, across? Yes. Like a seatbelt? Well, it, it, keep it keeps people from oh, coming okay, in okay, and out. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. i just never seen it. And I just saw it, and I'm like, are they just trying to, like, box them off? Like, hey, don't go any further. Like, they're afraid that the earthquake's mm -hmm. going to come, and everybody needs a seatbelt. <laughs> you know, a conclusion about injuries to the victim in this case, a person by the name of John O'Keefe. Yes. What did you review in anticipation of your uh, determining whether or not you could come to an opinion or a conclusion? So I reviewed this guy's camera sucks. Hospital photographs. It's got motion blur. Autopsy photographs. Yeah. An autopsy report. Um, grand jury testimony um, from the medical examiner in this case. Um, just say a lot of documents. Some other Based on items. I, I just want to ask about that. Do you have notes with you as to what you reviewed? No. <laughs> so okay, like, so is is the judge a lot to ask questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's weird is she was like, no. She's just able to remember this stuff, but she wasn't prepped on. She didn't know she was going to be coming to do, you know, she needs her notes up there. Normally you can't bring your notes. You don't. I'm not crying in baseball. If, if, if he tells you what you reviewed, you'd, you'd know it. I, I would recognize it. All right, but I want to hear it from you. You, oh, you don't know of anything else okay. that you've reviewed? Then why'd you ask the question, Judge? Mr. Jackson. Okay. Can you think of like, anything else, Dr. So federal you... courts recognize me as an expert. That's autopsy all you need. Photographs, um, autopsy report, neuropathology report, Chocolate. Uh, toxicology report. Tarantino. Go ahead, Judge. Eat your fucking pancakes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. And the grand jury testimony. Like, God damn it. So when, as you did it again. The items that you reviewed. Like, she's like, I want to hear it from your mouth. Report by Dr. Stonebella, correct? <laughs> fucking yes. judge. Pathology report by a doctor named Stonebridge, correct? Yes. Toxicological reports associated with the autopsy? Yes. Grand jury transcripts from Dr. Scordibello? Way to go, Jackson. Yes. Way to oh, tell her what she's reviewed. Finance. Including a gray sweatshirt? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Autopsy photos that were taken attended to the actual autopsy. Yes, and, and photographs that were taken in the hospital. And I read the um, hospital ER record also. <laughs> Did you see that look she gave the judge? <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me again. You just listed, there's also hospital photos separate and apart from the autopsy photos. Is that correct? Yes. And those hospital photos showed the injuries to Mr. O'Keefe's arm. Is that right? Yes. And you also reviewed emergency room records that are attendant to his initial um, acceptance into the emergency room on January 29th, 2022, correct? That's correct. Based on your review of all of those materials, were you able to confidently come to any conclusions or opinions about the nature of the injuries suffered by John O'Keefe specifically as it relate to as they relate to John O'Keefe's right arm. Yes. What is your opinion and conclusion concerning those injuries? Those injuries appear to be consistent with an animal attack. Boom. Are you more specific uh, in terms of the type of animal or are you relegated to simply an animal attack? Well, they are consistent with uh, with a large dog attack. Um, there, the, there's a combination of both what I consider bite wounds and scratch wounds on mm -hmm. the arm. Dr. Russell, we there know. also some puncture wounds in that shirt. Yes, there was. And all the so, I'm sorry, puncture wounds in the shirt? P puncture holes okay. in, the, in the shirt. You know what she uh, meant, Judge Canoni. And on what do you base the opinion 
that go sit and spin, right? With dog bite or scratch marks. Well, the patterns. There are several patterns of parallel wounds that um, appear to be superficial scratches that could have been caused by nails or could have been caused by teeth. Um, that they, um, there are different angles on the arm and different locations on the arm. And, uh, but they're generally oriented in a, in a specific direction. And there's also an area, the distal forearm, which is close to the wrist, uh, which shows what I believe is an arch area of, of teeth marks. Mm. And what's the significance of the arch area? Well, so the arch would be the front uh, area of the jaw of, of the animal. Mm. I get it. It's the like the, case. Okay. Uh, the where arch the are, where the front teeth are close together I get and, it. and curved. I literally was like arch as in like curved arch, pattern. like in the mouth, but not uh -huh. the frontal, you know, the front uh, okay. teeth causes an arch uh -huh. to the configuration of the teeth. Yes. So Mr. Jackson, could I have just a minute too? Yes, you may. <laughs> I was just around. He's like, Could I have just a minute, Your Honor? Oh, he's about to pull up an, an, an exhibit. An exhibit. www.zipit.com. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Alan. Let's go, AJ. I don't know. They got a bunch of pictures of his arm right there on the desk. I know. And he just grabbed one of them. He's like, pulled this picture. I, yeah. Up here. And he's with his AV guy. So I think they're going to put it up on the screen. Doctor, I'm going to show you a series of photographs. Mm hmm. Show me some photographs. <laughs> um, Brown chicken, brown cow. First, can you describe whether or not you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? Have you seen that photograph before? Yes, I have. Is that part of what you reviewed in coming to your opinions and conclusions? Yes. Uh, what is that a photograph of? So this is a photograph of uh, the decedent's for, uh, arm arm near the elbow and uh it do you want me to describe what it shows just briefly okay <laughs> yeah, and it shows wounds okay you know, she's been she's done this before you want me to describe what it shows because i'm all so, about that life <laughs> all right so, so for this voir dire we'll have separate evidence right is this an exhibit number in the trial already it has not been marked yet so I, i'm fine with uh starting over sort of for the purposes of what your process are so th this will be a separate voir dire with separate exhibit, yes. So it's going to be exhibit one? Yes. Voir dire one. Voir dire one. Voir dire one. You got to pack the car from the bar in the yard <laughs> and go get hammered. What's your exhibit? Hard, but I think, hold on. I, I like the accent, you know. To be honest with you, it's just it's just it's just cool to know that we have so many different dialects. Yeah. In the United States. We need a separate record for the voir dire. Yeah, Yes. For you guys, that's a big five dollar word. It means accents and vocal languages. And if you'd tell me the exhibit numbers that they are, what they are. <laughs> Right with the car. <laughs> You're putting Next these in now. There's no objection, Mr. Lally. For purposes of this, no. Okay. So we'll mark these now, but may I approach? Oh. Yes. The one, the one with the label two two eight five eight on the bottom. The recorder. She's trying to get it done, but they just mm -hmm. know what about it. She's like me. She's but so frustrated. She's lost her eyebrow. The trial. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, I. Okay. Did you hear somebody counting? Also, in evidence. Yes. Two of the three have not been marked. I'll, I'll, as soon as medical. The doctor, she's, she's like, like, ready. Get your shit together. I'm ready. May I just establish the foundation? Yes. The, the following two photographs that I just showed you, doctor, uh, do you recognize those? Yes. Did you also review those in terms of uh, in, in uh, furtherance of coming to your opinions and conclusions? Yes. Do they also appear to be different photographs of John O'Keefe's arm? Yes. I would move for the admission of both of those, Your Honor, uh, for purposes of one year. There's been no objection to this. I don't so know if that's in, a real good mouth. question because it could have been somebody else's arm with the markings on it. He has to lay foundation, which is these yeah, are which, exhibits. Yes. All right. I'm just thinking, like in my head, like in the picture, you can't really tell whose it is, as bad as that sounds. But I get the photographic evidence and all that stuff. I'm yeah, just... he he just he had to get uh, the foundation that she's seen that photo before, and that's what she examined. Okay. okay. She you can looks hear annoyed, the, like you yeah. can hear the judge like. <sighs> yes. I have to do more paperwork. Yes. <laughs> I have to do my job. How am I gonna block this witness? <laughs> is my hair too blonde? Is this a photograph of the uh, of John O'Keefe's arm? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is this one of the several photographs that you uh, reviewed in coming to your opinions and conclusions? Yes. I want to ask you a couple of questions about this. Uh, there should be a, a laser pointer on the, the desk. Mm. Okay. Can you explain to the jurors what it is about the injury <sighs> that assisted you in coming to your opinion mm. and conclusion that this is from an animal attack? Okay, there's several patterns here. So, for instance, uh, let's look here, right near the elbow, the exterior part of the elbow. Stopping there's right here. these two linear marks, which uh, appear to be from upper teeth, uh -huh. and two punctures below. Oh, those, I which, get it right um, here. Are superficial, meaning they're from the lower, deep into the skin but uh, they appear from the lower teeth. So that's one pattern. Okay. Uh, there are, there's another pattern close to the shoulder, which shows parallel uh, marks, these two right. and maybe a third one in, in the middle, uh, pow, parallel marks that are oriented at, at a certain angle. And uh, these are superficial wounds, uh, uh, which are um, consistent with teeth marks. Mm. Uh, they also could be possibly consistent with with nail marks, but with, with what? Uh, nails from uh, cloth. from cloth. Cloth, yes. Right. Uh, we have some more here, uh, similar with from you know obviously different teeth involved or uh, different claws, and um, and then over down here closer to the wrist, we have an unusual uh, pattern of uh, at least four striations the way i see it at least four striations that uh, i believe are caused uh from the teeth towards the front of the mouth near the arch i it, uh, it appears that there's an arch pattern here so i'm not seeing the arch pattern how how do you figure because of the way i'm thinking it's the way that it got drug open you see how there's like three to four lines which would be yeah. the two canines and then the front teeth. Oh, okay. I get it. I get so, it. Okay. Thank you for that. That's how I'm looking at it. But I don't like how she said this is a scratch or it could be a bite. Let's cover the ground. On the she's like, be... But you know, I'm she's agreeing with honest. her. It could be what yeah. it is or it could be the other thing. But I mean, she confirmed which ones are teeth marks mm -hmm. and which ones are scratches. So, I mean, are could be scratches. May I publish? Your Honor? Yes, I apologize. Is this May I publish? The same injuries. 
Yes. And do these appear to be consistent with what you just testified to in terms of either teeth or claw marks? See, at least they uh, they use the right. Now, equipment. once they, I see once they cleaned like some of the excess yeah. blood off. Now you can definitely see it right there. That's a puncture. Those are because that looks like it goes. Those go deep. I don't know, or maybe it's clawed. Let's hear what she has yes. to say. Yes, I'm thinking it's like one side of the mouth that bit in. That middle one is just an adjustment. Mm. Yes. I'm not into dog, like, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole dog bites. You see how the wrist one now changed? On the forearm, you mean? Yeah, from bruising. Yes. And these appear to be taken, uh, attended to the autopsy as opposed to the other photograph, exhibit two, that was taken in the hospital. Is that right? That is correct. All right. Uh, and with that, with the time difference, oh. uh, like change. So this photo here is when they were doing the autopsy and with at the coroner's office. So that's why it looks different. It's already been cleaned up and everything else like that. So that makes sense. The, the nature of the wound? It could. Photograph of the wound, I guess? It, it, it could, or a different technique, yes. Okay. Did you take into consideration the lack, in coming to your opinion and conclusion, the lack of other injuries, for instance, fractures, broken bones, or deep bruising, soft tissue injuries? Oh, yes. How did that play into your opinion? Well, so, of course, I considered, you know, what else could have caused these wounds? Show the know, witness. In, in, uh, before coming to my conclusion. Karen Reed. And, um, and so I wanted to rule out other things. and. There were no ma significant uh, major bodily um, injuries that, uh, outside the head. Uh, there was nothing, there were no, uh, no fractures of the uh, long bones, the chest, the pelvis, uh, um, you know, the arms. So, yeah, so, uh, so having seen hundreds and hundreds of car accident victims and look at uh, his face hit by cars, uh, I ruled that out very quickly. Okay. And in terms of the injuries that you could see, especially... And did you say that was the brother? Arm, mm -hmm. the That's Bo John O'Keefe's brother. Based on everything we've discussed today, is it your opinion, based on a reasonable degree of scientific certainty, that those injuries are consistent with an animal attack? Why aren't they showing the witness? Annoying. Yes. Thank you. All right. Oh. So, Lolly... I, I don't even know if his. I'll, I'll let. I'll, we'll allow the cross of the prosecution. Let's see if it's even worth it. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Let me take you back to you. We're talking about um, some uh, police training that you had received when you were in the academy or while you were working with the <clears throat> police department here in Massachusetts. Is that right? Yes. That was what, back what in the seventies, bro. Kind of training did. Uh, what did that training consist of? What does well, it matter? I attended Your mom. the standard um, police academy at that time. Uh, and um, and then I, I took additional courses that were offered from the Massachusetts Criminal Justice Training Council. And these were uh, taught generally by experts uh, in their fields. And they were um, on a variety of uh, subjects that are listed in you know, uh, in my CV included, you know, the hit and run accident investigation, um, you know, uh, for, forensic. There just for a minute, ma'am. Just in, doctor, in reference to the, your training as it pertains to hit and run accidents, what, what, what did that training consist of? Oh, well, uh, mechanisms of, of, of how accidents occur, uh, mechanisms of uh, how to determine, you know, what, what vehicle, uh, was involved in an accident there. Uh, I, I don't, re you know, it was a long, long time ago, but, um, but yeah, so uh, determining <laughs> if people were struck by vehicles, what vehicle was involved, or if there was uh, auto versus auto accident, what vehicles were involved. <laughs> and, and I don't to she just seems so exasperated. That, that was relatively rudimentary training that you received in the academy. Probably, I would not. Con yes, okay. She's probably. not there as an officer. Or anything like that, That's correct? not what she's that testifying for. And 
And am I correct? And you indicated that you're board certified in emergency medicine. Is that right? That's correct. And so you're not board certified in forensic pathology or anatomical <clears throat> pathology or any kind of pathology. That's correct. And <clears throat> the last time that you worked as a as a coroner, when when was that? Uh, last time uh, was in 1995 when I um, when I was doing autopsies for the coroner's office. I have since though consulted on numerous well some cases from the LA coroner's office. What about 30 years ago? Was that, was that about uh, right? For autopsy, yes. Now, have you ever testified uh, in a case uh, in which either Mr. Jackson or Attorney Little uh, were counsel? Not that I'm aware of, no. And when was it that you first uh, were contacted in reference to this case? Uh, the first contact was May 15th. May 15th of what? Uh, May 17th, excuse me, of, of this year, tw uh, 2024. Four. Yes. <clears throat> and went through a list of things that you were provided and you reviewed and you mentioned hospital photos, correct? Yes. Autopsy photos, is that correct? Yes. Uh, an autopsy report, is that correct? Yes. Uh, grand jury testimony from the medical examiner, is that correct? Yes. A neuropathology report, is that correct? Yes. A toxicology report, is that correct? Yes. And then I think you also remember some photos of some clothing items, is that correct as well? Uh, yes, a, a shirt. And I... And Anything else? Yes, yeah, hospital ER record. Hospital ER record. Yeah, yes. Anything else that you can think of? No. Did you ask for anything else to review? No. Were you told of any other material that was available for your review? Does the prosecution want to give her stuff to, to you know, review? <laughs> well, I I requested that my uh, that I focus in on the wounds, so I didn't ask for a lot of material in this case. Because she wanted to. Fair to say that you were looking for anything. And avoid anything, any kind of bias. Anything and everything, excuse me, material to the wounds that you were asked to look at, correct? Let's say, please say that again. Sure. Fair to say that you would want to look at anything and everything that was related uh, to the wounds that you were asked to look at, correct? Yes. And so, did you make any specific requests as to what? material you were provided or were you just handed some material or forwarded some material and you looked at what you were given? No, I requested that I have the autopsy photographs, the ER records, the ER uh, photographs. I requested those. Now, you mentioned some articles uh, that you had written that were published back in uh, 1996 and 1997 related to dog bites. Is that right? Yes. Are those uh, publicly available articles? Yes. And... <clears throat> In those articles that you wrote, you were talking about uh, law enforcement uh, bites, correct? Yes. Um, so law enforcement canine bites uh, typically involve uh, what you would call sort of a bite and hold technique. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes. So is there a difference between, uh, through your experience and, and the hundreds of uh, dog bites that you've seen, is there a difference between uh, what you would observe from a dog bite from a law enforcement canine versus a your Investigated dog. Well, yes. Now, um, the the study, one of those studies was uh, over seven hundred dog bite wounds, and there were two there were two techniques used at that time: bite and hold, and uh, later on, uh, bark bark and hold, or bark and you know, bark and alert, or something of that nature. Um, so there are different techniques, but uh, but yes, th to specifically answer that qu that question, which uh, uh, was are they different from generally different from uh, regular um, do domestic dog bites? Yes. <laughs> did you write a report? I had to say was yes, Doctor Russell. To clinch down and hold no. and pull. So I don't hold and pull. Much time, and I didn't know if I was going to be actually testifying. <laughs> How long would it take you to write a report? I wasn't asked to write a report. Excuse me. Were you asked specifically not to write a report? No. <laughs> she just didn't because she didn't have to. Now, <laughs> She's at like, any point in time, did you ever look at anything related uh, to Mr. O'Keefe's head injury? Oh, yes. So you reviewed reports in relation to that, correct? Yes. Do you have any opinions as it pertains to that? I would rather defer to the pathologist and neuropathologist on that. Smart answer, good answer, because that's not what she's there for. 
Yeah, she just blew into the mic right there. So who contacted you about uh, about this case? I contacted a district attorney that uh, I had worked with in the past. In L.A., we were, right. We were discussing a different case, a case that I autopsied in 1995. And um, and I, I mentioned that I heard that there was a dog, there was a, a case in Massachusetts that might have been um, uh, being handled by one of his colleagues, his former colleagues, and that there was an issue of whether something was a dog bite and that I might be able to help in that case. So she reached to out. Clarify. Yeah, they didn't find her. So here's my, oh, let's just get through when this and then I'll. We're provided this material, what is it that you were specifically asked to do? To look at the wounds and the reports and the materials that were sent to me and uh, render an opinion. And so before you had even been provided any material, before you had even looked at anything, uh, you had already heard information related to there being a dog bite involved in this case, correct? I had heard that there was a controversy that, that, that there, it, uh, there's some certain wounds could have been a dog bite or versus um, perhaps um, inflicted by a motor vehicle. That's what I had heard. So I, Pam, I'm just, what I'm really trying to get at, Doctor, is sort of the timeline, okay? So you hear about this, when was that? Sometime just before May 17th. So sometime just prior to that, you hear about some controversy in a case in Massachusetts involving a dog bite. Um, on May 17th, you were, get reached out to by who specifically? Um, his name is uh, John Lewin. He's an attorney in the LA District Attorney's Office. And then who did you talk to after that? Uh, I reached out to him. I said I, I might be able to clarify. And then he reached out to Mr. Jackson, I believe, and then Mr. Jackson contacted me. And I'm not asking specifically anything you spoke about, but at some point, I would the discussion came specifically to dog bites, correct? He's, yeah, he sent me the materials. He asked me my opinion. I get what he's trying to get at. He's trying to say that she was biased um, because that's how it got brought day. up. Yes, I know. But she's true. already said that she heard about a controversy. Provided an opinion? Yeah, that's not yes. how that works. That she didn't, the defense didn't reach out to her either. Time. Orally. She reached out to them. Reached out or to someone shortly before May 17th, booked Mr. Jackson on the 17th, received all the material, and then had an opinion by May 18th. Yes. But you didn't write any of that down? No. Why would she? She's not. An she wasn't witness. part of the. Yeah. yeah. On the materials that you were provided, what. Well, At that time, she was not a witness. She just wanted to see. Uh, I was told that the victim was a, a police officer. The decedent is a police officer. Uh, I was told that the, um, well, the defendant had been charged. And I was told that, the, um, that there was a controversy about whether or not uh, this, these injuries. And I guarantee they. Uh... By she probably saw it like on the and news. And I was also or told, and I read in the medical. Well, not really. In the very, very beginning of the case, and even when the trial first started, you know, out here in California, you don't hear or anywhere else outside of. But she's in Massachusetts, so never mind. Record that the um, decedent was found outdoors. Uh, I believe in the snow and hypothermic. Now, in regard to what you reviewed, you didn't review any investigative reports. Is that correct? That is correct. She shouldn't. Statements. Is that correct? That's correct. You didn't she shouldn't. Any lab reports as far as uh, from the, the forensic lab or anything like that? I, I reviewed the toxicology report. Beyond that, any other? Uh, if it was part of the autopsy report, I reviewed it. You reviewed everything attended to the medical examiner's file. Is that correct? Yes. But nothing from the lab beyond that? I don't believe I did. Hmm. Now, 
this first instance when you say you heard about it, how did you hear about it? Ah, uh, here well, we go. That's I what believe, I want to know. Uh, I yeah. believe it was via uh, a headline that I received in my email from the um, from Boston Globe um, headline. From yeah, was some, some kind of a you know there was some kind of interesting case, and it, I and I got it as an email and I looked into it. And when was that? No, well, that was that week in May. That you know, just um, a few days before May seventeenth. Uh, you subscribe to the to the Boston Globe online? I did at that time. I have not renewed it. How long had you been a subscriber to the Boston Globe? Um, I'm going to allow it. Probably a year or six months. Six months to a year. There was never any headlines or anything else that you saw about this prior to that that week just before May 17th. Not that I paid attention to. I have nothing further. <laughs> I have that nothing was further. It. I'm nothing right. further. Uh, keep what? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Further, Mr. Jackson. Nothing further. All right. So okay. So hold on. Just, hold on. Go ahead. Play. Since this is a voir dire, I get to ask questions, doctor. So oh, yes. Okay. I just have a, a couple of questions for you. I, I don't think I, I just wanted to see how it you. ended. So could you tell me again what your opinion is and to what degree you hold that opinion? Yes. These injuries in the arm are, uh, my opinion is that they are the result of animal bites or scratches. And do you know what kind of animal? Oh, yes. Most likely dog, large dog. And um, I'm, I'm very reasonable, um, very sure to, uh, um, you know, what's the word I want? Uh, medical certainty, uh, re very uh, All right, high, so degree, the, the high degree of medical certainty. Reasonable degree of medical certainty. Yes, definitely. She said hi, but okay. Okay, and another question. So I received information that you also viewed all reports associated with Chloe, a, a, a dog's prior bite history. Did you review those? No, I don't recall ever seeing anything like that. that. You also reviewed um, the UC Davis DNA testing results submission forms? No, I don't recall seeing them. So, ha, huh, take any, that. Any follow-up, any questions based on my questions? Nope. Not for the comment. Okay, oh, so, wow. Tommy, what do you think? that question from, like... I don't know. I do we'll be telling not. lies. Yeah. You know what? We'll be Who telling told lies. You Who told you that? Yeah. You're in contempt. I'm going to throw you in jail till you tell me. So that to me was very, very interesting. What do you think? Because Chloe was gone. How would they get any bite records from Chloe? She's gone. Right? Well, because she had previous uh, attacks on people. Oh. She's had previous bites on people. See, I learn something new every day. So now we're going to go to the next defense uh, expert, allegedly. Because, you know, we got to say it like that. We got to be alleged. Right. We got to be allegedly. Yeah. Legend legends. Let's let's legend together. To a legend. Yes. So this, here we go. I'm ready. I wonder what the what John O'Keefe's brother thinks. So I was I wrote that down. Did you really? <laughs> yes, I did. I did. We'll talk about it at the end because I want to pick your brain on that. But I literally wrote it down. Because that scour that I pointed out. That's why I wrote it down. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just at look face. at his face right now. Like he's Oof. Jackson, what do you got for it? Because well, you know, if you let's talk my about brother, this after. Hold up. Let's talk about it afterwards. You because... so mad. All mm -hmm. right, just hit play. Let's do whatever play. you want to do. <laughs> Who's he calling up next? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Another oh. smart article. Another smart article. Have you person. watched this already? No. Not all of it. I just started watching the first lady and I was like, bro, they're in trouble. Lolly, you're in trouble. I just That's don't what know how, what people is bringing up. Look at this. Charlie. Oh, look at that part. Yeah. He's got a part. 
That's why I said, look at that germ bag. Like, <laughs> you know you're for sis. You know you. You know you know your shit. You. Yes. He brought a briefcase, bro. He got that part. Fine. Did you see that yes, line? Yes, he did. He that ain't line. playing. He ain't playing. Look. So what? He's missing some hair. Are you ready, Mr. Jackson? He's Thank like, you, I'll Honor. work uh, it in. He's got his cowlick going. Daniel Wolf, last name spelled W-O-L-F-E. Don't forget that E. I am the director of accident reconstruction at a company known as ARCA, A-R-C-C-A. And tell us a little bit about ARCA. All right, so he can go against the So ARCA is a construction team. What? Of that I... cop. He could go against uh what Joseph Paul. Yeah, that's what he is. He, yeah, so, he's Okay. Here we go. Engineering company, we have a variety of disciplines that include biomechanics, failure analysis, human factors, premise liability, crashworthiness and accident reconstruction. Uh, is accident re you said that he, you were the current director of accident reconstruction, correct? That is correct. Is that a specialty uh, of ARCA specifically? Yes, sir. And what sort of contracts does ARCA routinely engage in? Uh, we typically work for uh, law firms, insurance carriers. What about other clientele? For instance, may maybe it's an insurance carrier or a, a law firm. But what about the ultimate client, uh, the military, Department of Defense? Have you contracted with other entities or agencies uh, sporting uh, sporting agencies. Certainly, yes. We've done research for uh, the military. We do. I feel like that was a hell of a lead also. question. Well, it's voir dire. <clears throat> well, yes, we are involved in a number of research projects as well. And in terms of ARCA and its commission, <laughs> really smart people. <laughs> internationally is recognized as a, as a leader in the area of accident. Yes. Um, as the director of accident reconstruction, do you specialize in not only accident reconstruction, but human factors as well? Yes, sir. Can you give me a synopsis of the professional discipline of accident reconstruction? What is accident reconstruction? Well, I think that's a very broad topic. Um, <laughs> I look at the cases that come across my desk. You know, I've been involved with pedestrian impacts, and that can be pedestrians seeing the side of vehicles, fronts, backs, getting run over by vehicles, being struck by a vehicle, then projected into another vehicle. Oh, I'd with, like to see that. I one. feel like he smiled on that one. I've dealt with. Yeah, because that, yeah, I bet you he thought <laughs> he's like, and he kind of he just looked like he smiled, like you know, pedestrian ejected into another vehicle. Bro, yeah, that <laughs> come on, man, you got Doctor Wolf. Like, you I feel like it's cool a Forrest thing. Gump thing. It came yeah, up Dr. from the Wolf, ground. Doctor Wolf proved it with collisions that involve sixty car pileups on a highway. So. Again, accident reconstruction in terms of the scope for a case, it can really vary case to case to spend, depending on the, the facts and circumstances of that case. And when you say dealt with, are you talking about literally going into, from an engineering and a scientific standpoint, trying to reconstruct what happened, what the causal effects were of that accident and what the results were, the results of damage or injuries were? Absolutely. Um, what about human factors? What does that discipline entail? What is human factors? Well, to give you an example of that, so I do a lot of nighttime visibility work uh, where, for instance, let's say a pedestrian's coming out to the roadway at night, maybe it's not a lit roadway and you're relying on your vehicle headlights to illuminate that pedestrian. So it's determining when would a driver recognize that individual on the roadway based mm -hmm. upon the headlights, if there is any artificial lighting, their clothing. And then we look at how do drivers respond based upon that scenario that they're presented with. So we know that response times are different depending on the hazard that's presented to them. So if it's a you notice the difference between his testimony, how he's explaining it as opposed to Trooper Paul, it it's like night and day, but it also shows his confidence in that he knows he knows his shit, you know? Yeah. Totally different. It's so different. The pedestrian coming to the roadway, it's a vehicle stopping in front of you. So that's the application of human factors. And that might include everything from passenger vehicles, commercial vehicles, bicycle issues, motorcycle issues, things of that nature. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what education, training, and background qualifies you to perform? Here we go. That you've just described as director of accident reconstruction at ARCA. 
Uh, in terms of my educational background, uh, I received a Bachelor of Science in Engineering from James Madison University back in 2012. Virginia. Along with a minor in mathematics. Uh, some of my coursework while at James Madison included courses in physics, statics, dynamics, kinematics, material science, and, and the your typical engineering sciences. Did you hear that? Your typical engineering sciences. Hold on. So he checked boxes just like Joseph Paul did, but... Um, he actually went to school for this shit. Yes. So, Laura's Joseph Paul was like, kinetics? What discipline is that from? Kinetics? <laughs> Where's this guy? Is <laughs> <laughs> this guy followed it up. He, Physics! He, he, the, the, the exclamation point at the end of what he just said was, you know, basic engineering. You tell it. It's basic uh, subsequent to my undergraduate degree, I then went on to the University of Delaware to pursue my PhD in electrical and computer engineering with a concentration in electromagnetics and photonics. <laughs> He's a nerd. Did your research area also include physics in, in, in addition to electromagnetics? Yes, sir. Optics? Yes, sir. Photonics? Yes, sir. I don't even know what that is. Correct. Oh, and lighting. You're accredited as a traffic accident reconstructionist. Yes, sir. Uh, by an fun. organization known as ACTAR, which is the Accreditation Commission for Traffic Accident Reconstructionist. Are you trained in photogrammetry uh, to determine vehicle tra crash and map scene evidence from photographs? Yes, sir. In other words, looking at a photograph rather than being at the scene, that is a, spe a specialty or a spe specific area of training that you've engaged, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, so in other words, he is so specialized and he has had such extensive training and education. He doesn't have to be on site. He can just, he can tell you what's happened by photos because he's actually smart. Not because he just didn't go or he just relied on a crime scene, random crime scene investigator to tell him the, <laughs> the distances. He actually knows. Uh, are you trained in Bosch crash? crash data retrieval analysis. Yes, sir. Otherwise known as CDR analysis, right? Correct. Oh, so we can read that shit too. Little magic black box. Of automotive engineers. Ooh. Yes, I'm a member of that organization. What about being a member of Optical Society of America? Yes, sir. Illuminating Engineering Society. Yes, sir. Jesus. Finally, the National Association of Pre Professional Accident Reconstruction Specialists. Yes, sir. He's credited by all of those organizations. He's credited. Yes, sir. <laughs> like five fucking things. Like holy shit. Compared to Trooper Paul's, um, no. what his criminal? What is it? Administration associates degree and yes. one class. <laughs> administrative. Uh, I've offered a number justice, of, a number of, of justice, papers, administrative uh, justice. Uh, and one of my most recent clerks was that uh, dealing with. Uh, Let me hear this. Oh, I'm sorry. Construction specialists. Yes, sir. You're accredited by all of those organizations. Is that right? I'm a member of all of those. Yes, sir. Have you authored peer reviewed articles uh, in the, the area that we've just discussed? Uh, I've offered a number, authored a number of papers in the field of physics. Uh, and one of my most recent publications was that uh, dealing with uh, Toyota and Lexus vehicle control history records. In 2021, specifically her vehicle, author, uh, a peer article known as Collision, the International Compendium for Crash Research dealing with vehicle control history and braking issues. Yes, sir. Um, have you qualified in other courts to testify as an expert in the area of accident reconstruction? Yes, sir. Importantly, were you hired by the defense in this case? No, sir. Before this morning, when you walked into court, have you and I ever met face to face? No, sir. In terms of your the commission that you were uh, asked to undertake uh, in this case, uh, did that have anything to do with the defense? No, sir. Did that have anything to do with the Commonwealth? No, sir. So, so a third party agency hired you and commissioned you, or ARCA, with the responsibility of doing an accident reconstruction in this case, correct? Correct. The person to my left, this uh, the female to my left sitting here, you ever seen her before? Nope. Hmm. Do you know who she is? Yes. That would that would be good now. How many times have you been qualified in other courts to testify as an expert in the area of accident reconstruction? Uh, I think that's around 20 times to date. Uh, in both federal and state court? Uh, just state court. Multiple states? Yes, sir. 
your analysis conclusions and opinions are completely independent, whatever they are, those analysis conclusions and opinions in this case are completely independent of the defense and of the Commonwealth. Have I got that right? It's based on the evidence, that's correct. And you're not paid by either side here in this courtroom? Correct. You and your team were asked to undertake a review for purposes of accident reconstruction of the case that's now pending before the court. Is that right? That's correct. Who at ARCA was assigned no. to the team who ultimately would undertake that analysis? Uh, so it was myself, Dr. Andrew Rentschler, and Scott Klein. And Scott Klein has a Master of Science, is that right? Uh, I believe he's got a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, yes. In Engineering? <laughs> correct. All right, and Dr. Rentschler is a PhD in what area? Biome uh, biomechanical engineering. Uh, were you provided and did you review certain materials uh, in furtherance of your consultation in this matter? Yes, sir. Can I have just a moment, Your Honor? Yes. <laughs> I'd like to use my time. <laughs> It's just a moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, spin around just a moment. <laughs> Let's get there. Let's get there. Come on. Listen. We don't need to hear anything else. We know you're an expert. You don't have to say anything yes, else, Dr. What Wolf. That? What are those two pages? Uh, these are the first two pages from the report that ARCA issued in regards to this matter. Do you see a list of 14 items uh, on those two pages? Yes, sir. Is that an accurate reflection of the items that you were provided by this other agency to review in terms of coming to your opinions and conclusions concerning this case? Yes, sir. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes. Do you think the other agency is the FBI? I do. Those I do, too. Include the Norfolk SPDU Homicide Death Report. Correct. Correct. So what Tommy and I are talking about is what Jackson just was able to get out on the stand was the defense nor the prosecution contacted him, but he was contacted by a third party agency to specifically review the evidence and come to a conclusion in this case. And Tommy and I are speculating that it is the FBI, because as it has come out in this trial, there is an FBI investigation, investigation. that is going on about this investigation. So the FBI is investigating how this case was investigated. And what Dr. Wolf is saying is that, hey, regarding this state case right now, I was not contacted by the defense or the prosecution. Nor have I seen you. We I've talked never to talked them. to you. Well, and they he, communicated, but only after to, only. Yeah, because of Jackson finding out what his findings yeah. were, I guarantee you. And he has never seen or talked to Karen Reed here's prior the, the a, a, ever. Can't the judge like dismiss this still or can't the prosecution like back out? There has to be a motion. Uh, there oh, okay. has to be a motion made. So it's not like case. TV where they can just be like, hey. This case is dismissed. Yeah. yeah. There has to be a motion. But here's the thing. The defense doesn't want a dismissal because then that means the prosecution can come back and, char and, and try mm, and prosecute okay. her again. They want an acquittal because then double jeopardy applies you can never try and come after or start some bullshit in her life about this ever again she's about know? i if she gets an acquittal i see i see a money rolling in her favor. i would i would sue the dog piss out I, of i see this Anthony being a lifetime TV. movie mm -hmm. <laughs> oh i would watch it in a heartbeat police crime scene report correct correct OCME de dispatch removal report, correct? Correct. Photographs of the incident location. Correct. Videos of the incident location. Correct. Photographs of the 2021 Lexus LX 570. Correct. Photographs of recovered evidence. Correct. 
crash data retrieval report from the 21 20 so he looked at all of correct. the data correct. and all of the yes. quote unquote evidence the laser scan data of a lexus lx570 yes a vin link oh wow -I -I a laser scan of the car lx570 yes expert auto stats well they're status. used they work with the 21, government like too, Department of Defense as well. Yes. And publicly available literature, including but not limited to the documents. So basically, learned treatise I don't know if it's her car they lasered, but basically they took a laser. Basically, they take cameras mm -hmm. and they move it around the car and laser it for dimensions. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? And then for specifics. I, yeah. And then they take her car and do the same thing and laser the uh crash area mm. to have it more defined as a detail to see exactly what could have impacted to go onto that well what that's I, amazing what i like is the fact that he didn't talk to anybody and he didn't take anybody's word for anything he looked at the hard data what does this show? What does this show? And then he looked at also the other reports and, and photos and things like that. And Triple this is what he does. This is this is what you do. Like, you don't get your information from other people. You you build your case. To the... mm -hmm. I agree totally with that. Like, Trooper Paul should be watching this. Team and coming to your conclusions and opinions. He will from his jail cell. Yes, sir. And I'd like to ask you one other series of questions concerning sort of who did what. Your report indicates uh, that there were... In, in no small part, two undertakings, if I can, if I can ask them uh, in terms of pillars, the damage to the vehicle and the injuries to the body of John O'Keefe, correct? I would say that's a fair characterization, yes. Okay. And, and I may be butchering this a bit because I'm not being very scientific, but were you more responsible for the vehicle damage or the injury damage? The vehicle damage. And who on your team was more responsible for the injury damage? That would be Dr. Andrew Rentschler. Obviously, Dr. Wolf, in coming to your opinions and conclusions concerning the damage to the vehicle, you had to consider the damage to the human being, correct, John O'Keefe? Mm -hmm. Correct. And as the, as the team leader, in terms of Dr. Rentschler coming to his conclusions and opinions concerning the damage to the human being, he also had to consider the damage to the vehicle and the interplay of the two, correct? Correct. We work together. Is that? I was just going to say, is that how you two and uh, Mr. Klein work together to come to the opinions and conclusions that are cited in your multi-page report? Yes, sir. That's, that's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah, it's going quick. Lally? Lolly, what do you got to ask? What do you got to ask? Don't do it. Just sit down. Sit down. Don't do it. Don't. Oh, bless your heart. Just Lally. put your foot in your mouth. Good morning. <laughs> Your motherfucking mouth. <laughs> now, you went uh, through a list of about 14 things that are contained within your report that uh, your firm or your agency was provided with uh, that you reviewed, correct? That is correct. Did you specifically review all 14 of those things, or was that done as uh, sort of a team? Uh, yes, I, I looked through all of the documents. <laughs> you personally looked at all 14 yeah, of those he documents did. Uh, that are listed within the report? Yes, sir. And <laughs> you indicate that it was uh, your fourteen documents. I'd have looked at every single document too. You were asked to answer specific questions, correct? Yes. It wasn't like you were just tasked with hey, here's some facts, go do or take a look at a crash reconstruction or create a crash reconstruction. You were asked very specific questions and you tried to answer them the best you could, correct? I don't know that there were specific questions. I think uh, ultimately it was an open-ended question. But related to two, you testified as to two specific areas that your firm or your agency looked at, right? Those are the disciplines that the report covers, yes. Well, you <laughs> testified about some other areas or, of expertise as far as uh, human factors, visibility, uh, luminescence, things like that. You didn't do any of those things here, correct? wasn't part of my scope in this case. And the scope in your case, you indicate that it was based on the evidence, correct? That is correct. Now, to be fair, that's based on the evidence that you were provided, correct? Correct. So 
So what did Mr. Klein do? Um, so as a part of the engagement with uh, the entity that uh, ultimately retained us in this, um, you won't due to say. the confidentiality of it, only those who had access to the material uh, to the file were allowed to review it and discuss it. And essentially, uh, Scott Klein served as kind of another uh, reconstruction expert to essentially bounce ideas off of and help with the review. So in other words, Scott Klein was a peer for peer review, checks and balances, and also what he hid in that whole sex, what he just said right there was a need to know basis, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely confidentiality so that it wouldn't get, get out. out. There's no bias behind it. It's literally just him bouncing ideas off a medical examiner who's also. No, there, Scott Klein's not a medical examiner. Well, he said there was a doctor that reviewed the. Yeah, evidence. but it's not a doc. It's a Ph.D. Dr. Rentschler and uh, then there's Scott Klein who has a master's. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Yeah, but. um. He, but it's still somebody to bounce off yes, ideas to that's involved. Peer. And it's not like, hey, here's 10, 20 people. Let's right, no, it's a group. peer because it was a need to know basis. And this is, he could also <laughs> say, hey, that's above your pay grade, pal. You can't know this. <laughs> so for lack of a better term, sort of provided, uh, let's say, sort of technical review of, of your work and Dr. Uh, Rensler's work. Is that correct? Uh, I would say assist us with the analysis, yes. So it's just like your co-counsel. Now, obviously, your <clears throat> firm and your agency issued a report in relation to what you did, correct? That's correct. And you obviously had a time to... Uh, obviously. That I want to know what his opinion is. Mm -hmm. Actually, as well as conclusions, opinions, things of that nature. Yes. So is it your testimony that anything that has to do with anything factually, conclusions, opinions, or otherwise, uh, in relation to the motor vehicle damage, those are your opinions, those are your conclusions, correct? I would say that's fair, yes. And again, based on the evidence that you were, you were provided, correct? Correct. And so the facts or evidence or conclusions or opinions uh, related to uh, injuries to Mr. O'Keefe, that was Dr. or Mr. Rentschler's uh, area, is that fair to say? Dr. Rentschler, yes. And again, that was based on the evidence or whatever he was providing, correct? Correct. Which would be the same materials that you had testified that, that you had. You know, none of these correct. questions are really getting anywhere. All right, so um, doctor, I just have one question for you. What specifically were you asked to do? I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't hear the question. What specifically were you asked to do? Uh, so the agency that retained us uh, gave us a selected quantity of file material related to this case um, and essentially left it as an open-ended question. Um, ultimately, was the evidence consistent with a pedestrian interaction between Mr. John O'Keefe and the Lexus? Okay, you said selected quantity of information. Who selected that information? Uh, it, he can't say. As far as I'm concerned, it was it would be the Department of Justice and the FBI. <laughs> Holy and they just shit! Gave you what they wanted to give you, as far as you know. We had no say in what material was was handed over to us. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank Doctor, you very much. Any questions yes, based on my Judge Canoni? Are you shitting Sorry. yourself right now? Just briefly. Um... <clears throat> yeah, Lolly. And, and I apologize for this. I Unaware. Is it Mr. Wolf or Dr. Wolf? It's Dr. Dr. Wolf is fine. Um, so, Dr. Wolf, when you say uh, that you were asked specifically whether or not the evidence, the limited scope that you were provided was consistent with a pedestrian collision, were you asked um, sort of in general terms as far as any type of pedestrian collision, or were you asked specifically as far as um, biomechanically could say the injury to the back of Mr. O'Keefe's head have been caused by contact with the vehicle. How, how open-ended was this question? Uh, again, I think it relates to, is the vehicle damage consistent with the pedestrian impact, and are the injuries consistent with the pedestrian impact? Don't ask it. Don't do it, buddy. Of injuries, is that correct? 
I'm sorry, what was your question? Let, let me rephrase. So did anybody specifically ask you to determine whether or not the injuries to the back of Mr. O'Keefe's head could have been caused by a motor vehicle? I don't know that they asked us specifically. Again, they basically asked us per, to perform an accident reconstruction and biomechanical analysis and basically tell them our findings. And these are our findings. And in the yeah, so they didn't, they so just gave them the work. You see mm -hmm. anything in there of any sort of statement, suggestion, intimation, anything at all that suggested that uh, the injuries or the fracture to the back of Mr. O'Keefe's head was caused by a motor vehicle? In terms of direct contact? Yes. No, I don't believe so. Nothing further. Anything? Nothing. All right, Dr. Wolf, you are all set, sir. I want to know what his opinion is. Um, he he just said that it was um, not a motor vehicle accident. I thought that's what he just said in his expert opinion. But he's not going to go in depth because what they did discuss prior to at the beginning of the voir dire was a basic thing of their credentials, what quantifies them as an expert and their basic opinion. And he just did. He just. And what do you think Lolly's thinking right now? Like, oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> That's exactly what I think he's thinking. I'd like a motion to dismiss. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need to get done with this right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, Let's get him to the next guy. But I do, like, like, I see some people going to jail here pretty soon. Man, I'm telling you. This, this is, uh, I, I just don't see how they can try and and say that these aren't experts. Uh, they're they're the expert. They are the nation SME, basically. I mean, they know their stuff. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Like, if the Department of Defense, see this guy's on Facebook. The, if the Department of Defense, Department of Justice. And the Federal Bureau of Investigation uses your company. This is Dr. Andrew Rentschler. Okay. All right, whenever you're ready, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, sir, could you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? Certainly, Dr. Andrew John Rentschler, R E N T S C H L E R. So, what do you do for a living? I am a biomechanical engineer and accident reconstructionist. In what area of the country do you live in? I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. What is your title currently uh, at your company? I am a uh, vice president and director of uh, biomechanics for the Midwest Division. And what is the name of that? It's uh, called ARCA LLC. And what is the, the main mission of ARCA? What does ARCA do? So ARCA is a engineering consulting company, and we, we have several different types of engineers, biomechanical engineers such as myself, uh, accident reconstructionists, mechanical engineers. We look at cr uh, crash worthiness, safety of vehicles, and other types of events. Um, so we really do all types of work. We do litigation type work as well as research and development for government and private entities as well. I may have just a moment, Your Honor. Yes. Yeah. Take your time, Jackson. We've got all day. We do not. Can you give me a, a brief synopsis of the professional discipline of injury causation biomechanics? What is that? So injury causation biomechanics is, is really applying traditional engineering principles to the human body. So as, as a biomechanical engineer, I look at the response of the body to accelerations and forces and determine how an injury occurs. You know, an, an injury to the human body is, is just an engineering problem. For instance, a mechanical engineer might look at a piece of steel and you know the size of the steel and the shape of it. And if you apply a force in a certain direction, that steel will bend and eventually break. Well, we do the same thing, but we look at the human body. How much force do you have to apply and how does that force have to be applied in what direction or manner to get a specific injury? 
whether it's a skull fracture, an intervertebral disc injury, a concussion. So we look at the response of the human body to different forces and accelerations in different types of settings. And, and ultimately, our hope is to help mitigate or prevent injuries, whether it's in a motor vehicle accident, sports setting, industrial setting, auto pedestrian impact, try and make products and environments safer for individuals. And that's different from what medical doctors do, correct? It is, yes, sir. A little boy walks into an ER with a, a broken arm, the medical doctor wants to reset the arm and fix the arm, correct? That's right, yes. What does a biomechanical engineer want to Want to learn he wants to keep it broken. We want to learn how that, that break or that fracture occurs. And I always say that we kind of approach injuries from two different directions. You, you have an injury occur. After it occurs, moving forward, that's when the medical doctors get involved. They diagnose the injury, determine the best way to treat it, what's the prognosis. As a biomechanical engineer, I kind of take the reverse direction. We look at here's the injury, here's what's diagnosed. Well, how did that injury occur? You know, how much force do you have to apply to cause that fracture? How did the bone have to be loaded? How did it bend to actually cause a specific type of, of fracture? So we really kind of uh, approach the injury from two different directions. Understood. And given that scientific approach, oftentimes you can come to conclusions and opinions, scientific conclusions and opinions about the causation of an injury, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, ultimately, that's what biomechanical engineering is, is how does an injury occur? Why did it occur? And in what type of setting did, did the injury actually occur? What type of loading and, and what type of kinematics do you need to have this injury actually occur? Can you tell the court a, a brief synopsis on the discipline of human factors? What part does that play in what you do for a living? Well, human factors is, is a large part of it as, as well. I mean, from a biomechanical standpoint, we look at the body, we have to know anatomy, we have to know the makeup of the body, and then human factors plays a, a part of it as well as how individuals respond or what their response is to different types of environments or reactions. It really all plays into looking at a specific event. How did I guarantee you not it not once in his report will you find the word stuff someone react? How did their body move? How was the body loaded? There's all different types of factors that you have to apply. The human factors, kinematics, kinetics, biomechanical, uh, musculoskeletal interactions. It's all these different factors that are really involved in, in performing an analysis to ultimately look at injury causation. Doctor, as the Director of Biomechanics and Human Factors at ARCA, what education, training, and background quali qualifies you to perform those duties? Well, I got my uh, bachelor's of science in mechanical engineering with a minor in biomedical engineering from Carnegie Mellon University in 1995. Sorry. I then went on to get my master's in bioengineering and biomechanics from the University of Pittsburgh in 2002. And then I got my PhD or my doctorate in uh, bioengineering and biomechanics from the University of Pittsburgh in 2004. Do we even need to continue? No. No, we really don't. We These are their experts. These are their ex. I mean, honestly, do we? No, I mean, it's serious. No, I, here's the thing until they get on the stand, what we're listening to now, I'm sorry, until we get on the stand and what we're listening to now, uh, I think they're going to have a lot more to say on the stand than what we're hearing right now because. Yeah, they're not giving they're not giving details, and I'm pretty sure that they're going to have their like, especially with the laser thing, they're going to probably show the dent well, and be right. like, "There's no way that this body part could have hit here or right. any of the body." Like they're going to go with, in yeah, really detailed, really in depth. The 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 female the doctor I can't think of her name right now. Uh, Russell, she gave a little spill of her the dog bites and how she can you know came to that realization of what? what it was but then like the next guy just talked about it and then this guy is probably just going to talk about it again but well they're talking about different things doctor and no so no no and i'm saying that but i'm saying each one of them i think brings is bringing a different element to the table and right. it's amazing but well, the whole point of, of this voir dire was just to see if they would be allowed to testify at all. So if they don't have this voir dire in which they talk about what they're going to testify on, their specialization and their credentials, without this, the judge wouldn't allow it. So 
right now what she's trying to get is their backgrounds, what were what they did, what they focused on, a general consensus as to because they have reports. So they submitted those reports um, before she will decide, which was this morning, as to whether or not they can testify. So we have a ruling because I did see it this morning. And we are going to hear the judge's ruling right now. It's really quick. This is a bad camera angle. I'm just going to call it right now. Thank you. Jackson, but I call Commonwealth's renewed motion for reciprocal discovery and motion to exclude defendant's expert, Dr. Marie Russell. So the Commonwealth was alleging um, violations of Rule 14's reciprocal discovery requirement, and the Commonwealth asked for exclusion of Dr. Russell. I did find and do find that there was a violation of the reciprocal discovery I obligations don't. of the defendants. Um, I was looking for a remedy. You called it a sanction, Mr. Jackson, but I called it a remedy. And I did tell counsel, as you know, at Sidebar a couple of times, at least last week, that I did not want to exclude the testimony if I did not have to. So um, we had the voir dire, and um, I'm satisfied that the voir dire provided the Commonwealth the information that the defense should have provided the commonwealth so defense didn't I'm have it to allow doctor no, no, no. to test if so with her that's what i was saying very limited. okay go what so with her she gave like her evidence all that stuff and she's going to allow that testimony to stay in she hasn't ruled yet oh, okay, okay okay yeah no she hasn't ruled yet that's what but, i thought she was talking about no she was talking about what she was going to allow on because they found it to be a rule 14 violation, meaning you have a, um, disclosures to put on equal footing. The thing is, is like, I heard the defense's argument in that they didn't have, they weren't sitting on all of, on these witnesses or all this information or even these reports. It came to them after the trial started. And as soon as they got it, uh, they gave it, to the prosecution within three days time. You know, at this point it's a kangaroo court, but let's just see what's happening. I don't even like using that term, but what I've seen it get this far. So I'm not going to be surprised. So let's hear what her ruling is. And I think you even sort of acknowledged it uh, the other day, Mr. Jackson. So she'll be allowed only to opine whether or not um, the marks on John O'Keefe's arm were the result of an animal attack. I find that she is, a medical doctor, she's an experienced ER doctor, albeit, you know, several years ago since she's worked in that capacity, um, but it's that she does have special teaching. specialized knowledge in that field that may assist the jury in this regard. So she's um, going to allow she her. She can't to... testify as an expert on police activity. There'll be none of that. Yet. She wasn't she doing that in the first place. Testify yeah, as to what the stupid. injuries are inconsistent with. She cannot testify that they're inconsistent with having been struck by a vehicle, road rash, scratches from broken glass or tail light matter or any other, anything else. So, so she can testify that, hey, which she can testify. It was a dog bite. dog bite. The second part of the Commonwealth's motion. So Dr. Wolf and Dr. Renschel. Um, Commonwealth argued that they were not provided reciprocal discovery regarding the uh, biomechanical engineers and others, but the, specifically uh, ARCCA, Dr. Wolf and Dr. Rentschler. Um, and, and I do find, though, I understand why the, the defense didn't respond, but it is a violation of Rule 14. So we had this voir dire. The Commonwealth was looking to see what each person did, their independent opinion, what their testimony would be, and whether they were qualified to render the opinions that they qualified. So from what I heard the other day, Dr. Wolf can testify to what he, um, his involvement. Uh, Dr. Rentschler, though, I have some concerns. Um, it's clear to me that in Massachusetts, biomechanical engineers are not qualified to testify as to medical causation of an injury. Only an MD can do that. So, Okay. So the problem with that is this Massachusetts state law, is, it, it was put into effect long before they even understood what biomechanical engineering is. A biomechanical engineer would know how a body reacts when struck by a vehicle more so than an and a medical 
examiner. I totally agree with you because that's what their focus is. That's is what they're how so, things got damaged. Yeah. So she's saying that Dr. They can testify, but Dr. Rentschler can't say that, you know, this is what the cause of death or this is what's going to ha what happened to his body because he's not an, a doctor. And I think that's wrong, but whatever. So I'm going to reserve ruling um, on the rest of his testimony. Um, there are certain things he can testify and I'll hear you again before he testifies next week. Let's just proceed with the trial today. So basically what ended up happening now is she's saying, okay, you know what? Um, Dr. Rentschler, I know in the state of Massachusetts, we only allow medical doctors to determine that kind of thing and not biomechanical engineers, but I'm going to withhold my, dis my ruling as to, uh, anything further on what he can testify until he testifies. So see, I think she's, I don't know, Bev, it's not looking good for you, Bev. It, it, it is coming across as you're, you're really reaching and looking for a reason not to allow him to testify. It's the way it's coming across to me. I could be wrong. No, I totally agree with you. I got, I just, there's a mm. lot of stuff in this court case. Like you say, kangaroo court, uh, I just I've not seen before and I, I don't know how you can just turn around and it seems like this rule 14 like the prosecution just keeps filing the same words except for he went after their credentials like hey biomechanical or mm. uh what was the other the other guys reconstruction yeah blah, blah, blah. and it's like yo yo man just leave it alone. Just because your experts it's haven't true. been to snuff in terms of with Trooper Paul. Well, and one of his arguments was that he wasn't provided a, he didn't have he these didn't people. Have well, but, here's the thing. It's not, not your, it's not my fault. You didn't have them. Did but you neither reach did out defense. to somebody? But neither these did These guys the literally defense. came out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. On May woodwork. 17th. Yeah. After, in the middle of May. So it, whatever. The at the end of the day, they Molly are going to be able to do his homework and get his own people. Or hey, these guys are doing their thing, or he knew they did it, and then mm -hmm. he was like, "Let's not get them on stand." And out of nowhere, it's like, "Oh, defense found them." You brought up something, and it made me I think, and not. I wrote down the question. So, in the beginning of this trial, before all of this defense stuff came out, uh, I believe John O'Keefe's brother thought that. Uh, hated, you know, and, and thought that Karen Reed probably did kill his brother. Knowing and hearing he's been at the trial every day, do you think at this point he's changed his mind even a little? Or is he, do you think he's seeing the issues that, you know, the majority of people who are watching this trial are thinking? Like the these stories aren't adding up. Maybe she didn't do it. Do you think he's he's thinking that now? I don't want to think of that terms. I want to think like if if it happened to me and my my brother died, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to the prosecution bring up all these people, and I'm like, all right, you know, same story, but then stuff starts not adding up, but mm -hmm. then all of a sudden these Vaudier, 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 uh, Vaudier, I like it. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> all of a sudden these expert witnesses start to, you know, put the Buckles. pieces back into it and like, all right, but here's the thing. Has he been like, fuck you, Karen? Don't fucking speak to anybody in the family or has he yeah. been like, Hey, we're supporting you. Like, no. You it's get what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah. It's been the first one. He's so thought that it, Karen is Reed... Is he going to turn around and apologize and be like, hey, I'm sorry that we thought of this? Like, Or is he just going to walk away and never have... I'm not care. You know what? Honestly, at that point, I, I don't think that's neither here nor there. I'm just wondering if, you know, prior to the trial... he Prior it, to the trial, if he's saying, fuck you, Karen, then he's thinking that Karen did this shit and is trying to get away with it. And now... You see the frustration in his face. That's what made me bring that up because he looked livid when he heard about the dog bites. What I was going to say was 
prior to the start of the trial and at the beginning of the trial because he testified. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, he testified in the very beginning. Um, you know, he it 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 came across as he believed Karen Reed killed his brother. She was responsible. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's getting his information from longtime people, you know, who are from Canton, who, you know, all of this stuff. So now I have to wonder, especially when he hears the credentials and the prior testimony of it being such a shit show to hearing these experts to just Dr. Russell saying these were dog bites and knowing and having the issues of Chloe and the Alberts, you know, their dog Chloe before, do you think these things are being put together in his mind where he's like, and that's what I said earlier. Yeah. yeah. We were wrong. Cause here's, they the did this. Yeah. So if my brother was killed and I was sitting there and of course I would, I would think the same thing. Like I, there's no way you can keep an open mind because of all the it's what either you've been told. guilty or innocent prior to going in. Not no, no, a, no. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the family, but now hearing what's coming out, like it starts leaning my head. But you could see his face, like someone basically spat on him. I'm just wondering if he's and he's pissed. now thinking that because you saw it, it was like reddish purple. Like yeah. you could see but, how pissed off he got. But I'm wondering, <laughs> you keep cutting me off. That's, that's, the, that's, the, the, yeah. that's our side. We talk about it, that all the time. Anyway. We do. If I'm wondering if he thinks that, hey, the Alberts did have something to do. Oh, yeah. Now. I definitely think that. You think that's what he, no. Oh. Do you think that's what he thinks? He's thinking that now. That if I'm wondering if the O'Keefe family when is starting to When you go back and review now. this video, no, I saw said the same thing. That I just said. Yes, I do think that he thinks the Alberts had everything to do with it. Yes. What about the rest of the family, though? Because I'm not seeing much. From Does it them. matter about the rest of the family? Yeah, his mom is right there. It does matter. I'm talking about that. The rest of the family, I think, is in agreement with you know the brother. I think they're starting well, to realize I wonder that, if he's... that it's not. And I don't. I don't see. I talked about. Karen do, getting a truck like mm -hmm. money from it, but mm -hmm. I see them going after Kent and PD also. Or but the what grounds they would have to show damages to them, whereas it's not like damages with Karen. Work. But it's just hiding mean, the evidence. But that you're not getting it. They okay. have in order for them to sue, they would have to show that they had damages from this, which they don't. It, Karen Reed would be the only one. She was the one who was incarcerated. She's lost money having to defend herself. Yeah, but I'm talking about civil wrongful. court, that kind of stuff. Like that's what I am talking about. They don't have a civil case. They haven't. There's, there's nothing. There was no injury to them. You know, the injury. How, was do, to Karen how Reed. do loved ones, even if they're not in court, go after certain things like uh, a death of a loved one? That's wrong because that's a wrongful, wrongful death. That's a wrongful death lawsuit that they're suing the individual who caused the wrongful death. Canton PD did not necessarily. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're the going to probably death. go after the the uh, Alberts. But At least they, that part is correct. But they no, they don't have evidence or any proof that the Alberts committed a crime or caused him to die. So that's why I'm saying they have no claim or no basis. Whereas Karen Reed, she wouldn't be able to sue for wrongful death, false imprisonment, uh, punitive damages, um, you know, all, all a lot of different things because so of this. Basically, because of the hiding of the cell phones, losing Chloe. There's well, they no didn't evidence. lose Chloe. They gave her away. Uh, I'm going to consider that loss of Chloe. Like you gave her away, you no yeah. longer have her in your family. It's a family loss. Um, but and they don't have any, they don't have any feet to stand on if no. the, all this stuff comes out because there's no evidence. No, the evidence is being used to show that Karen Reed killed John O'Keefe. That's what the evidence is being used for, according to them. So they would have to have a whole new trial right okay. now. J Brian Albert's not even a suspect. So they have no grounds, you know, 
I like just to see, so, you know, honestly, I want to see him say something at the end of it all. I would like to hear what the family, and because I told they've you, already said, they've already spoken it, before. It takes one person, one person to break silence. Mm -hmm. And this, this thing is underway. Yeah. How well, well do you trust your family? Not well, to run their mouth. Well, apparently in this, in the Alberts and the McCabe's, uh, it's pretty good because they haven't run their mouth yet. And on that note, you guys, uh, you know, we're going to keep, we've, we, you know, this, <laughs> this case, we haven't even gotten to the defense yet. I'm, I don't even need to see anything more from the prosecution, to be honest, because I have too many questions and there's too much doubt at this point. I mean, I'm waiting to, for the medical examiner, but I don't I, I don't know how that's going to go, if they're even going to bring them on. And then I guess the defense said they only need like three days. Right? I know, puppy. Only three days. because So we'll see. But we're going to get back to our regular content. Um, please feel free to comment. And, uh, you know, if you've got something that can clarify things for us, we'd greatly appreciate it because, you know. Just a bunk of yeah, bunch we're we're of learning. Holes. We're learning yeah. at this, and we're trying to we're trying to improve. Yes, so always. definitely definitely help us out. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe and share. Please like, share, and subscribe. And on that note, we'll spoke at you later. Peace.